Greetings, internets. Thank you for joining us in the shop again today. Uh, for you, a treat especial, if you will. I stole that from AVE. Uh, today, I would like to show you a couple of different things. The first thing uh, is a preview, a new flashlight from Prometheus. It's been a number of years since we've actually launched something all brand new. Uh, it's an 18350 flashlight. Still uses the same Icarus driver uh, from the Alpha but also a solid metal tail cap button, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, I actually basically made a provision for this in the original design of the Alpha, uh, and I've had a prototype for years. I just haven't had any time to work on it, uh, but I don't know, maybe a month ago, something like that, I finally dug my heels in and decided we were gonna get this thing done. So it's very cool, the, the tail cap button, instead of being rubber, is a solid piece of metal. We're going to make that out of different things. Uh, the cool thing is that it should be, if all goes well, backwards compatible with almost every Alpha flashlight ever made. The ones it's not compatible with, there are only a handful of. So that is pretty awesome. Right now the tail caps are in beta test. We just sent out a few uh, for people to check out and uh, try for a few weeks, see if we have any problems with it or if we have any issues with fitment over different generations of flashlights. So far, so good. So without further ado, there she is. Yeah, so this takes 18350 battery. Output-wise, it's about the same as one of the full-size Alpha lights. Uh, head screws off. Solid copper heat sink, little Icarus driver in there. Tiny little 18350 battery. It also means the capacity is less than a 18650, which is twice the size. This battery uh, holds about, well, the label says 1200 milliamps. It's really about 1100, which is actually pretty good for an IMR battery. Uh, an equivalent 18650 battery has 3400 milliamps. So if you really need a tool that you are going to use light for a long time, you're going to want to pick the Alpha, but for something to throw in your pocket and just use as needed, this is Plenty sufficient, especially if you are a good flashlight owner and you keep your batteries charged. However, that's not really why we're here today. What we're here to talk about is uh, the tail cap button, all metal. Uh, this is just a raw aluminum prototype uh, that I've been beating around for the last couple weeks. So, the real purpose of this video is to show you how to install uh, this tail cap and change it out uh, with your standard rubber boot. It's pretty simple, uh, so why don't you guys Come in a little closer here and we'll get that done. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use my new prototype light for this because it's a plug. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is get the tail cap off. Uh, however, I always recommend you actually remove the head of the light uh, so that the tail cap spring is not under compression. Because if you unscrew the tail cap while the battery is compressing the spring, it's basically just unnecessary wear and tear uh, as that load on the spring changes and gets pushed sideways and stuff like that. Uh, there's just no reason to do that. Just take the head off. Take the battery out uh, before you're going to take out the tail cap. So we're just going to unscrew this bit here. Don't need the clip, so I'm just going to take that off. Uh, in other news, we also now have these handy dandy uh, switch tools. I used to use uh, bent nose pliers, uh, but I got tired of having to order them because it takes like two months to get them or something like that. So we went ahead and we machined our own. Uh, this is a little neural disc with a couple of prongs uh, that engage the two little holes on either side of the switch spring, and it works like this. Just slide it over. It's got a relatively snug fit. It holds itself on. And untwist. <laughs> cool, right? Uh, okay, so now we're just going to dump out everything else that's inside the switch. So this had a normal rubber tail cap button. There's going to be uh, three of these red washers a black o-ring, uh, and then the rubber boot. It would be good 
at this point to know which order these things came out. So if you didn't do that, you probably should have watched the whole video first. All right now, so this is basically the new metal switch kit. Uh, and what we've got here is the button itself, uh, which has got a little O-ring around it. Uh, it's got a recess in the back that actually holds this little spring. Uh, another red fiber washer, uh, and then, I don't know what to call this thing, but it is necessary. Uh, it's just a little spacer that goes inside and helps make the magic happen. So we're going to flip that over, and uh, it doesn't actually matter which order you do this, uh, but you just drop that little ring in and it should slide basically all the way to the bottom on its own. It kind of disappears in there, but that's what she looks like. Um, so the outer face of the button is actually going to ride up and down inside that little ring and that's going to keep everything uh, in alignment and it goes a long way to actually making the switch feel good and not get really bound up tight. Um, I was a bad video preparer and I did, actually, I did not bring my nano oil over here to the table. But you're going to want to lubricate this o-ring. It is not going to work properly uh, if you don't lubricate it. So basically just put a little bead of oil all the way around the o-ring. You don't want to try to put it all together and then put oil in from either end. Just take it out, put a little dab of oil around the o-ring, drop that in there, push it all the way to the bottom. So now basically the button should be uh, in its seated position. Uh, it is flush so that it can tail stand. Uh, I also happen to have a little uh, some, uh, optical adhesive and, and glow powder that I put in here. I'm not totally sure whether we're going to do this or not. It might be an option, but it's honestly a huge pain to actually get that stuff in there. Anyway, so little ring thing goes in. You can actually put the switch in first. Drop the switch in. Push it to the bottom, then you're going to take a little spring here and drop that in so that it sits nicely and there's a little groove that pretty much takes care of itself. Fiber washer, uh, and this is the fiber washer basically just gives us a bearing surface. So when we screw the switch in, the face of the switch uh, is actually touching the washer uh, instead of the face of the switch touching that thin little ring, um, which is Mostly just an engineering and reliability thing. All you have to do, screw this bad boy back together. If I can get the thread started. All right, and just use that tool to snug it. It doesn't need to be super tight. You can't over tighten it. Um, you also don't want to tighten it so much you break these little prongs off, but uh, finger tight, as we call it in the industry, not gorilla tight. Just snug. And you should have a working, all metal, awesome feeling tail cap button. Um, this will require lubrication from time to time. That's just the way it works. Uh, the O ring is moving, and in any kind of dynamic seal like that, as the O ring moves, uh, it's basically pushing the lubricant away. So from time to time, you're going to need to put a little bit of oil on there if the button feels sticky or anything like that. Um, and obviously, before you lubricate it, you're going to want to clean it. Basic maintenance stuff. Uh, all right, so that's pretty much all there is to it. Put our flashlight back together. Pocket clip, good. Battery. Head. Oh, I guess I should also mention that the Delta flashlights use the exact same tail cap as your alpha flashlights. So that's a plus. Where's my thumb? There it is. Thumbs up to that. Uh, all right, and it works. Sweet. There you go. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.